The Jefferson deadlift tends to work better with a barbell, but we can do it with a dumbbell too, so I'll show you the dumbbell version. The uh, weights should be set up on some sort of bench, elevated so I don't have to pick them up from the ground. I'm gonna do an RDL to pick them up and drive through the legs. Now, the stance on this one, one foot is like back and turned out, while the weight, if you had a barbell, right, the barbell you'd kind of straddle, it'd go between your legs. When you do this with dumbbells, you can't do it exactly the same way, and that's why I don't like it quite as much. You can't turn this weight in like this. It works pretty well for what I'm showing you here, but this weight is nothing. Like, this is not a challenge at all, and I need to challenge myself a little bit more when I'm doing something like, like, you can do pretty heavy weights on something like this Jefferson deadlift. So when I do that with these power blocks, the block is then out to here because there's a bunch of plates layered on and the dumbbell is really long. So when you do it with dumbbells, this back hand generally has to turn like this. You usually don't want it way out like this because you're gonna just pull it into your leg and you're gonna have to overcome all that friction. So you're gonna rotate that back arm just ever so slightly like this. And I'll show you this kind of three quarter view here. I'm just gonna do a normal deadlift. I hinge at the hips and then I drop down. Now when I do the Jefferson deadlift, I'm normally feeling the, what I, I would call it the front leg. So when I set up, I'm going one leg forward, one leg back. So this left leg is the one that's doing all the work for me. Biggest problems here are trying to make it a normal deadlift. Like you shouldn't be super symmetrical in your back while you're doing this because your stance is asymmetrical. You're, you're supposed to let the back kind of follow. So what I like to think about is let the hips kind of follow where the feet and where the load are. So I'm putting most of the load on this front leg here. I'm gonna let my hips kind of turn toward that front leg so I can load it. Where the shoulders are gonna to try to stay loose, they're gonna come back this other way and that's what helps maintain my balance while I do this. Now I'm hitting my chair, so I'm not going low enough. So let me show you from here too. So we're off to the side. We hinge first and then we come all the way down. So I wanna stay bent over, get a nice stretch in the hamstrings and then squeeze the glutes at the top. Specifically that, well, I guess you'll feel both. You'll feel like outer trailing glute and then you'll feel a lot of the front glute as well. Something just like this. Biggest thing that people are gonna mess up here is when you get to the bottom, you're gonna round. Outside of like the, the hip turning thing, just don't let your back round. Stay nice and tall through the top of your head and drive through the heels.